guys, Dwayne England here, Northwest Wild Country, with this week's installment of our Pro Cam, brought to you by Sportco and Outdoor Emporium. Everything you see on the table here before me for today's Pro Cam uh, can be found at Sportco or OE. If you can't find what you're looking for, make sure you ask the guys at the fishing counter. They'll be sure to give you a hand. So with that, this week we're talking about kokanee and trout, but primarily kokanee and baits and scent. Now we all know that uh, kokanee are, for the most part, scent junkies, so sometimes the more we can throw at them, the more we are uh, able to get their attention. And just when you think you have them figured out, they like to change it up on you. So I like to always head to the lake or the reservoir I'm fishing, especially the first time I may be there, uh, with, uh, with unknowns of what they truly like, uh, with a variety of uh, scents in different colors of corn. Now I use pretty much exclusively, uh, exclusively Potsky's uh, fire corn. Reasons for that, obviously, one, I'm with Potsky's. Two, uh, it has been, been cooked. It's extremely durable. It has uh, fantastic colors with UV properties to it. And uh, because of the way they cook the corn, which firms it up, it definitely makes a durable bait that's going to stay on. It takes scent and oils and different types of uh, scents easily as it absorbs into the corn and it stays. So you have staying power, you have durability in a bait, you have color and some UV properties. That's why I don't buy the store-bought stuff. It's too soft, it works for a day or two, then you got to throw it out and resent. I'm going to show you how simple it is simply by grabbing a couple jars of the Potsky's fire corn, the Shupe corn. I also like to use the Berkeley Gold Maggots. Uh, those work very, very well. And with the Berkeley Maggots, uh, my favorite go-to scent on that is the old tuna garlic by Smelly Jelly. Simply grab some of that uh, Smelly Jelly tuna garlic and dump that in the jar. You know, it doesn't get much easier than that. Just put that in there and uh, let it soak. And those, uh, those little maggots will actually swell up a little bit as they absorb that oil. And um, if you keep that in the refrigerator, that's going to last you a better part of the summer, uh, depending on how much you fish and how fast you go through them. So if you only fish once in a while and you don't really use that entire jar throughout the course of the summer. As long as you keep it in the refrigerator, and this goes for the corn as well, you keep it refrigerated, it's going to last just fine. The scents don't break down, the corn and the maggots don't break down. It's a very long-lasting bait, well worth the small investment to give you bait throughout your uh, summer and into fall fishery. When it comes to scenting up the corn, uh, gosh, I have a number of scents that I really like to use. Um, Tuna garlic, of course, is one of the ones that stands out that most people uh, kind of go to nowadays. Um, and as far as colors, too, you know, pinks and natural color corn are probably the ones I use more than, than the others. Uh, dark red does work. Green does work on occasion. Yellow. But for me, for the most part, it's pinks and natural corn. Getting back to the scents, shrimp anise works extremely well. If you look out here on my smell of jelly lineup, I have clam. I have squid. I even have an old bottle there from uh, Yum that is actually crawfish, which I started using last year. It smells extremely fishy. And one thing I figured out about kokanee when it comes to scents that attract them or get them going, scents that have a lot of fish properties to them. So your tunas work well. Some of your uh, uh, other shrimp scents also work well, but uh, that crawfish is one that kind of surprised me. Along with herring, don't be afraid to put some uh, herring oil into a jar of corn and fish that. Any and all those will work. Um, I use a lot of the Mike's uh, scents because of the UV properties in some of them and just because they smell so natural to me. There's a lot of different scents out there on the market. Uh, when it comes to choosing which scents to use, that's entirely up to you. I go with a lot of Mike's into my Potsky corn uh, because at Potsky's we don't make scents. So, well, we make scents, but we don't make scents attractant. So, uh, I use a lot of mics again because they smell natural and, and I think they work well. So it's really very simple. We're going to do a jar of natural corn today and I usually just take it and it, again, this is not a complicated process. You can put the oil right into the jar, but you're going to get a better mix uh, as far as all corn uh, having equal amount of scent on it if you go ahead and dump it into a small container and add your scent. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this uh, crawfish because I need another container of crawfish and instead of spraying it on there we're just going to dump a little bit of this in here. This is a good oil base uh, scent and man does it, it really smells. That's got some really strong properties to it. 
So we got some crawfish going on that natural looking corn. You can see uh, the redness that you add to it. It's really not going to change the color all that much. Something else I will do from time to time as well. I will take a bottle of Potsky's Nectar. This is egg juice and I will actually put some of that in here. It just helps broadcast that scent or allows you to kind of leave a scent trail uh, as you are on the troll. Now it's got quite a bit of liquid in there. You just mix that up and uh, basically you got a really strong potent crawfish scent to it. I got some egg juice properties in there and then we just simply dump that back in our little jar here. Um, probably could do that now but it'll make a mess. So uh, put that back in the jar and then of course take your uh, felt marker okay, and just right on the top of the jar on the side here exactly what you put in here. I put on the top of the uh, maggots here, TG, tuna garlic. Pretty easy to see. I know it's green. Uh, so if you look at my bait tray, it has all the different uh, scents in there. I got crawfish, I got squid, herring, uh, clam, uh, krill, anise, shrimp, anise, herring. It all works. Okay, and you can set yourself up with a couple jars and approach your day with that and if it works great, if it doesn't, you might struggle. If you set yourself up with a number of different scents, each different uh, jar has its own scent. And when it comes to putting them on your lure, I generally, as I pull this skirt back, so I have uh, two pieces of corn on that front hook which is tucked underneath the skirt generally on my lure and then on that trailer hook I either put one piece of corn or I put one of them Berkeley Gulp maggots. But uh, generally it's two pieces of corn for me on the front hook and one piece of bait on the back. Sometimes it's one piece of corn front, one piece of corn back. It just depends which way you want to do it. I uh, would not recommend putting two or three pieces of corn on each hook. That uh, weights down the lure, it lessens the action on the lure, it drags a lot of extra weight. You don't need it. The lure and the attraction of the lure and the dodge are going to pull the fish in. The scent on your corn and on your Berkeley Gold Maggots is going to make the difference in getting them to bite. So hopefully that helps you out. Uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of options you have here and simply by mixing and matching different colors, different scents, you're going to find yourself having probably more success than if you have not been doing this previously. Um, that's about it. If you have questions, hit us up on Facebook. I'll post this up on our Wild Country Facebook page. This is uh, this week's installment of our ProCam brought to you by Sport Cohen Outdoor Emporium. Again, everything you see here is down there at uh, Sport Cohen OE. Ask the guys at the Fishing County if you can't find what you're looking for. Dwayne England, Northwest Wild Country, this week's Pro Cam. I'll see you on the lake soon.